Okay, so we're going to start the demo with the uh, Panasonic 40, which comes in this kit. Obviously, these handles are designed to allow you to pick it up nicely and they clip on. You carry it, probably it should be untwisted. And they open up. Um, we have barcode scanning, so at the cage they will scan this and then scan your card to know that we have, this is the Panasonic O2, the number two kit is being checked out to you. It's called 40K T02. And um, that means that if you're working with someone else, you should double check when you leave the cage to make sure that you have the right camera, which is actually saying number two. Because later when we go through the inventory, if one came back broken and then it was in the wrong kit, you might be held responsible for uh, damaging something that you didn't damage. All right, as long as we're on the bottom of the camera, you can see there's two different uh, types of holes. One is a threaded hole and the other is non-threaded. So we're going to talk about that, how the, the uh, tripod plate actually goes and fits. So the little, there's a little uh, piece that fits here and then there's a screw that fits into here, a little bolt um, that you'll affix that and it will stop it from twisting you will line up and fit into the base. Um, the other parts of the components of the camera include this, which is an adapter that's been attached to the camera. So what I'm gonna do is turn around so that you can see, what I'm going to do is rotate the camera so that you can see the back of the adapter, the XLR adapter. And then what we're going to do is mount the, the, this microphone onto the camera. And we're going to insert this into input number two. is either a line or mic switch that's here line or mic so obviously we're going to be shooting with microphones so you'd have these both switched to mic the second thing to notice is the attenuator ATT you see it in both places um, this actually limits the camera so it won't over modulate if you have too loud of a sound um, so some people recommend turning it on if you're monitoring your audio or you feel that your audio is somewhat within a, a range, um, then it's not necessary to, to put that on because in some ways it's an automatic limiter. It's not the same as an automatic limiter, but it does limit the sound, which might clip certain parts of your audio. Uh, certainly it will protect you from overmodulation, though. <clears throat> so whether I recommend it or not depends on the user. The other thing we have is uh, you see input number one and input number two. On input number two, we're going to be putting uh, the onboard mic, the mic that's on top of the camera, and we're going to have this switch to two. Well, we're actually going to have it switched to channel one and channel two. If we have only one mic going in, it allows us to switch this to channel one or channel two. If you, so you would go into input number two, Let's take a look at the microphone that comes with your camera. This is an MC70 microphone made by HD ProLine. And this requires phantom power. In other words, it doesn't have its own battery. So we're going to be putting this on top. Notice it has a windscreen over the, this is, the, this is actually the microphone element. It comes with a protective windscreen that allows you to protect the audio recording uh, from wind that will cause distortion, okay? <coughs> this has an XLR cable that we're going to be putting into this XLR adapter. So what I'm gonna do is turn around so that you can see 
What I'm going to do is rotate the camera so that you can see the back of the adapter, the XLR adapter. And then what we're going to do is mount the, the, this microphone onto the camera. And we're going to insert this into input number two. And it clips. What we also can do is come in with a second microphone, like a boom mic, and put it into input number one. Or we could put two professional mics into input number one and num input number two, but now we're actually having one that comes with the camera, plus a second microphone. Okay, so now we're back to the adapter, and uh, the difference here is going to be channel one and channel two, or channel two. Which do you select? And if you have your microphone going into channel two, what you, and you have only one microphone, what you'll do is switch it up to channel one and channel two, so it sends the signal from channel two to channel one and channel two. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the channel select. I have one microphone plugged in. And if I want to have that signal sent to both channel one and channel two, I can switch this to channel one and channel two. If I only want that microphone to go onto its own channel, which is channel two, it's in input number two, um, then what I'll do is switch this to two. This particular microphone does require phantom power, so we're going to have the plus 48 volts in input number two to power this microphone. If, though, you were to insert the uh, XLR cable for the Sennheiser microphones that you could check out in your Sen kit, this could be in the off position because it does not require um, phantom power. So the, this is, refers to 48 volts, which is an electrical charge that goes into the XLR cable to power the microphone. When we turn this, you can see here the level settings, and I'll get a little closer on that. On the side of the adapter, you can see the levels for channel one and channel two. Um, so these are for the microphones that are going into input number one and input number two. So what you can do is adjust these appropriately. On the back of the camera, you can see how you will power on your camera. You depress this little white button and turn it to the on position. And then you can see the little camera uh, red light blinking. When you want to go to take your footage, you press the little red button, and that turns it to record. record button on the top of the camera along with a telephoto rocker that goes from telephoto to wide angle and we'll talk about that in a minute. It's a way to zoom in your lens. with the 5D camera, I've just white balanced the camera, so I don't know if that's going to make a difference. <clears throat> okay, what we have here is the LCD panel. That's called liquid. 
What we have here is the LCD. What we have here is the LCD panel, which is liquid crystal display. And if you open that, it's one way to view your images. And if you if you open that, you can see inside the panel you have several switches or around and about that area. There are several switches that you can use to change the settings on your camera. <coughs> So right here we have the liquid crystal display or LCD monitor that's attached to the camera. You can also view it through the viewfinder um, based on your own preference or the lighting that's outside. And inside the panel you can see there are several things that you can set. There's the optical image stabilizer, zebra, which allows you to see zebra stripes. When uh, you're shooting, if it's overexposed, you'll see zebra patterns on the overexposed material. Um, in all cases, if you can, switch it to manual, and we'll talk a little bit about manual versus, versus auto. This is the LCD panel, which allows you to view your images on this little screen, which is a liquid crystal display. And inside that area, you, can, you have several adjustments that you can make. The first thing is, that you can choose from auto to manual functions, which allows you to do auto focus, auto iris, auto zoom, um, and this, this can go either to auto focus, auto zoom, auto white balance, auto iris. If you wanted to control those things manually, you can switch it to manual, and then you can set something to be automatic but uh, you have the ability to choose what you want to be automatic or manual. This is the optical image stabilizer. This is the optical image stabilizer, uh, which I usually keep in the off position. It's just one more thing that's processing images. These are zebra stripes that allow you to see what's overexposed. You can put bars on your film, which are color bars on, to, that go onto your uh, card. And then you can choose what type of counter you want to have. You can reset settings, and there's user buttons to, that have presets that you can toggle between. This camera also comes, one of the features of this camera is that it has its own mini mic plug. So if you have a lavalier mic, or something like that that needs to be plugged into a mini plug, you have a mini input here. In addition, you can see there's an HDMI and USB 2 port there. So there it is. It's a, <clears throat> a mini port, a mini microphone plug <clears throat> jack right here near the lens configuration in the front. <clears throat> you have a mini plug right there near the front lens inside this closed piece. 